mistakes in X Factor finals were the most entertaining moments of the entire series. This is one of the worst runs in the show's history and Simon Cowell must know it can't be allowed to bomb like this again. There were so many amazing moments during last weekend's breathtaking double dollop of the X Factor that, even now, I'm struggling to pick a defining one. So I'll just do the decent thing and give the nod to Ollie Mers. Partly because I suspect the poor lad could do with a lift. But mainly because when he stood on the stage and solemnly announced we apologize for the mix-up earlier, I can't have been the only one of the X Factor's estimated 90 million viewers who spat their booze across the living room and yelled, which one? Honestly, there were so many mistakes I'd started to suspect the entire production had been handed over to Lord Sugar's clueless twonks as part of the final task on The Apprentice. Not that I'm complaining. It was the most excitement the X Factor had produced all year. In fact, it left me feeling so charitable towards the show I couldn't even bring myself to be mad at the cheeky little scamps for literally taking my idea for a Lewis Walsh, John Lewis ad spoof and running with it. However, no amount of goodwill can stop me naming this the worst series in the program's history. It may have gone out on a high thanks to Simon Cowell calling in one-time only favors like Mad Dictator under siege, but in the cold light of day he must know it cannot be allowed to bomb like this again. And just imagine how dull this 250-minute build-up to a foregone conclusion would have been without all the cock-ups and the big-name guests. Don't get me wrong. With a fair wind, a charitable sound mixer and a well-stocked choir behind her, Louisa fully deserved a win although at times that duet with Rita or I should have been renamed and I'm yelling you. I just wish her victory had not come at such a cost to poor Reggie, and Bolly. Asking them to try and sprinkle Thepontins, and Butlin's aqua aerobics class magic on an old Bob Dylan dirge was possibly the cruelest trick Cowell has played all year. Of course, any guilt will be wiped from his mind by the time his first beer arrives at the Sandy Lane Hotel Bar, Barbados this Christmas. However, I suspect the perfectionist in him will find it harder to forget the weekend's balls-ups. Especially after I bung sin it at a five at nailed this top five to his favorite son lounger. Five Rita claiming only Louisa and Leona Lewis had made any real impression on the X Factor despite the fact that One Direction were in the building and poor Ollie was standing right next to her. For that waitress thrusting a tray of mince pies under Cheryl's nose as she arrived at the Extra Factor. I'm guessing no one had told her Cheryl had already eaten earlier, in the month. Three the producers persisting with the lame will Cora wear a Christmas jumper sketch despite the fact we'd just seen him wearing it in the previous ad break. 2. A clearly flustered Caroline Flack realizing she was meant to be interviewing Reggie, and Bolly and Clacketty clacking her way onto the stage like a hen party straggler running for the bus. 1. But straight in at number 1 we have world-renowned music experts Simon and Cheryl's synchronized abortion of a standing ovation when they realized that what they thought was the end of Louisa's final performance was in fact just a key change. Simon, Cheryl, I didn't like the cock up. I loved it.